Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss inspection in a respiratory system examination. So traditionally inspection is followed by palpation, percussion and then auscultation. But in a critically sick child or in a busy emergency this sequence may not be possible and you may have to alter this sequence. Inspection is a very important part of examination and it gives a lot of information without disturbing the child. When you are inspecting the child, expose the child from neck till waist and there should be adequate lighting. Inspection involves counting the respiratory rate, looking at the respiratory rhythm, the respiratory effort, the chest shape, the chest symmetry and the chest movements. During exam, usually an effort is made to assign a relatively cooperative child to the candidate. This is unlike the practical scenario where the child is either critically sick or is comfortable and calm only in a particular position. Additionally, one may look for any scars or lumps. Now these scars may indicate previous procedures like thoracotomies, chest tube insertions, any lung biopsies or even tracheostomy tube placements. Count respiratory rate for a full minute. During cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you may count for a lesser duration. Generally, rates greater than 60 per minute in age less than 2 months of age, beyond 50 per minute in uh, 2 months to 12 months of age and beyond 40 between 1 year to 5 years of age is considered fast breathing. Now fast breathing is sensitive but not specific for pneumonia. Most children have a clinically regular breathing rhythm. But infants especially the younger ones and those who are premature have, a, have short pauses during respiration. This is called periodic breathing. Now, Periodic breathing alone is not clinically significant, but if it is associated with any bradycardia or cyanosis, it becomes clinically bothersome. Retractions, use of accessory muscles, flaring of alien eye, and paradoxical breathing are indicative of increased respiratory effort. In conditions resulting in decreased lung compliance like pneumonia or increased airway resistance for example asthma, a patient needs to generate a lot of negative pressure and because of this negative pressure the pliable portion of the chest which is the intercostal space, it gets pulled in and it manifests as retractions. Now these retractions can be intercostal, subcostal, supraclavicular, suprasternal. Use of accessory muscles like contraction of the sternocleidomastoid muscle during inspiration also suggests increased respiratory effort. In small babies, this can also lead to head bobbing. Flaring of alien SI serves to increase the diameter of the airway and therefore decreases airway resistance in the upper airway and also the total airway resistance. In normal circumstances, both the chest wall and abdominal wall move outwards during inspiration. The reverse pattern, that is, the inward movement of the chest wall during inspiration is called paradoxical breathing. This happens when the intercostal muscles are inactive and diaphragmatic contractions dominate the respiratory excursion. Paradoxical movements can also be seen in infants who have very compliant chest wall. In older infants and children, the presence of paradoxical breathing usually signifies respiratory fatigue progressing to respiratory failure. For evaluation of the chest shape and symmetry, if feasible, the child should be sitting or standing straight comfortably. If the child is examined supine, he or she should be lying flat on the back with head, neck and body in as straight a line as possible. The arms should be by the sides and facing upwards. This position will enable us to pick up any asymmetry of the chest. You should try and inspect the chest from the front, the sides in supine position. In a child lying supine, you can also examine from the head end and the foot end of the bed. While examining the chest for shape and symmetry, specifically look for kyphosis, scoliosis, 
flattening or over inflation of the chest wall kyphosis is forward bending of spine and scoliosis is lateral bending of spine and both these positions restrict lung movement normally the chest is symmetric on both the sides when one side appears prominent it could be due to curvature of the spine or the child's asymmetric position it could also be due to the volume loss or hyperinflation or increased volume of thoracic content the chest movements may be affected on one side due to abnormalities in lungs or pleura or chest wall or diaphragm resulting in asymmetric breathing movements compare the chest movements on both sides the side with lesser or decreased movements is more likely to have abnormality an increased anterior posterior diameter of the chest in comparison to the side to side measurement suggests hyperinflated state now let us look at this child the left shoulder is lower than the right shoulder the chest movements is less on the left side if you look at the intercostal spaces they are much better visualized on the right side the cardiac apex is also well visualized and is shifted towards right side now if we examine the same patient from the back this the chest movements are decreased on the left side compared to the right side this child had left sided pleural effusion with pleuritic chest pain so the movements on the left side were restricted and there was a mediastinal sh shift to the opposite side thank you for watching this video please help us improve the content by commenting in the comment section or emailing at the link given below especially regarding the length of this video anything which can be removed or anything which can be added or any other comment and suggestion thank you so much